what's up YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551, and I am back with a My Two Cent Switch slash gaming video for this week, where I take a look at some of the stories that caught my attention and give you my thoughts and my opinions. Uh, before I begin, I just want to say Happy New Year's to my subscribers and my viewers and everyone out there. I hope you all had a great, happy, and of course, safe New Year's to be exact. So why don't we get started with the first part of our My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to start off with a rumor that has sort of caught on a little bit, though. And that has to do with the rumor that The Witcher 3 could be coming to the Nintendo Switch. Now, for those who are not familiar, The Witcher 3 was released back, I believe, in 2015. I could be wrong, so... If I am got the release date wrong, just mention it in the comment section, though. To, I mean, much... <clears throat> excuse me. Um, to much um, fanfare and pr and support. Um, the game also got praise as many people applauded CD Projekt Red's handling of their the way they handled the DLCs and all that. So now I played the game on the PS4 and it's it is fun. I enjoy it to be exact. Um, even though technically graphically there are some hiccups here and there, but nevertheless it was a fun. Um, game. It was as fun as Skyrim, although as much as I like Skyrim, and I do, I will say The Witcher 3 is kind of a little bit better than Skyrim in a way, and I'm certainly looking forward to the CD Projekt Rec's next upcoming game, Cyberpunk 2077. So the idea of, this, of The Witcher 3 uh, coming to the Switch is kind of interesting. So from several articles, um, we'll start off from several articles, so um, links will be in the description. This one all from comicbook.com. It reads, quote, With so many incredible ports out there for the Nintendo hybrid consoles, rumors are very quick to spread. Ever since games like Skyrim, Doom, Wolfenstein 2, and Warframe made their way over to the Nintendo Switch, and in the most stunning way possible too, the list of desired ports continue to grow, and with that, the rumor mill turns once again. The latest... The latest in Nintendo Switch gossip is that The Witcher 3 from CD Projekt Red and it's coming at a perfect time given, um, given the new Netflix show in the works and the, th and the third installment once again topping Steam sale charts this year. The, la the latest rumor comes from a very dubious source, so with all leaks, take this with a heavy grain of source. According to Twitter user Direct Free Game, there is a French wholesale listing CD Projekt game uh, for the hyper console. No link, um, no link, no link, no screen grab, simply word of mouth. And according to um, uh, according to the Twitter user Direct Free Feed Game, this was posted on December 28, 2018. It says, quote, there is a French wholesale that currently has a listing of The Witcher 3 for the Nintendo Switch. The site seems suspicious site seems suspicious to say the least. You can enter the information as rumor but wouldn't treat it as anything beyond that. Um, Twitter, the Twitter user Direct Free Game later follow up with that tweet by saying, Upon further investigation and a different browser, the site is looking more legit. Still enter the listing as rumor. Um, and he also, and tw the Twitter free user Direct Free Games also later up added more by saying, quote, No one is saying that the listing means the game is definitely coming to the Switch. Talk is strictly about the product page existing. Could it be an accident, accidental listing? Sure. Could it be, could it be nothing? Yes. Speculation discussion. Don't take this, don't take the page to mean confirmation. Now, I, I'm looking at this rumor from two different points of view on this one. A lot of people would say that this is probably false and this is not true at all. And to a degree, I don't exactly disagree with that at all. I mean, we have seen listings for games that supposedly would have come to, say, Nintendo console that don't always turn out to be true at all. Um, good, one of the several examples I could give would be when there was a listing that the Fire Emblem Fate games that were on the Nintendo 3DS, there was supposed to be a compilation of all, I think, Birthright, Revelation, and Congress for the Nintendo Switch, 
but at least that turned out to be false mostly because they were using supposedly an art page that was supposed to, that didn't turn it was just a fan art not a real official art page and all i also remember that um hold on a second I also remember Lost Planet 3 at one point was supposedly listed for the Wii U, um, which later turned out to be not true at all. So I wouldn't be entirely shocked or surprised if this turns out to be false and all. And there are people who claim that the game is simply not capable of handling a game like The Witcher 3, which I don't completely dismiss. Having said that though, we've gotten games like Doom and Wolfenstein 2, as they mentioned, both are graphically demanding games, yet somehow are able to run on the Switch. Granted, it's not perfect or anything like that. I mean, keep in mind, they do run at, <clears throat> excuse me, 720p, 30 frames per second, compared to, say, the PS4, Xbox One, or the PC and Steam version. But the fact that it still runs on the Switch and runs all right. I mean, it runs, it runs well. I mean, it's not perfect, but it still runs very well. Um, does give me hope that there is the possibility that a game like The Witcher 3 could come to the Nintendo Switch. Now, I think the issue is, should The Witcher 3 come to the Nintendo Switch, it's gonna be interesting to see how much optimization would have to go into it, um, how much compression, and would it be the kind of situation we've seen with like, say, LA Noir, which as much as I like that game, there was a part where if you downloaded, I mean, if you bought the physical version, you had to download the rest of the game. We saw that with NBA 2K as well. So I'm very curious to see if they, if The Witcher 3 were to come to Nintendo Switch, if they would have to do that as well. So, I mean, my overall take from this is that um, I certainly would be open to the idea of The Witcher 3 coming to the Nintendo Switch, but until there's official confirmation, I would have to say that this should be taken as just a rumor for now until we get an official word of whether this is true or not. And even if it is true, even if The Witcher 3 is coming to the Nintendo Switch, I would be very curious to see what optimization and what compression would have to go into to make the game work on the Nintendo Switch and would it function properly on the Nintendo Switch. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're gonna take a quick break. And when we get back, we're gonna get to part two. And this one has to do with Soldier Boy, the rapper named Soldier Boy, and his feud with Nintendo. And it seems as though he has sort of um, bowed out, shall we say. So we'll take a quick break and we will be uh, right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our My True Scent video. And for this one, this has to do with the whole situation with rapper Soldier Boy. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, if you, some of you may remember, towards the end of 2018, uh, rap, rapper Soldier Boy announced that he was entering in the console race by announcing what is often referred to as the Soldier Boy console and the Soldier Boy handheld. All, upon further investigation by some people, it was later learned that Soldier Boy was using what was apparently these Chinese knockoff consoles, then passing them all along as his own console to be exact. On top of that, it was later learned that there were a lot of ROMs or games on in these consoles that at least some developers feel like they, they he did not get permission from them to have it in their consoles and it was later learned that nintendo was looking at possibly seeking a lawsuit against soldier boy now soldier boy bragged about on twitter before eventually got deleted on the fact that he was not scared of nintendo and all that stuff well apparently it seems as though he kind of basically has may have just backed out of it though at least with his feud from Nintendo. Um, according to several articles, links in the description, um, this one from G-I-Z-M-O-D-O, D-O, I think Gizmodo, if I'm saying the name correctly, though I apologize if I'm not. Um, it says, quote, when rapper Soja Boy dropped his line of game emulator consoles, the internet arched a collective eyebrow. This we knew probably would not end well, and 
and Lo, less than a month after launch, both Soldier, Boy, Soldier Game handheld and Soldier Game console have been pulled from the rapper's online store. In a tweet, Soldier Boy said that he had to boss up and had no choice in the matter, possibly hinting at an impending lawsuit over licensing. This tracked with early speculation that both products looked eerie similar to the knockoff unbranded emulator sold by Chinese retailer um, Ambernick, A-N-B-E-R-N-I-C. While it appears that Soldier Boy just lent his name to the device, along with a slight markup, the emulator was still suspiciously cheap. $150 for the console, $100 for the handheld, that they could supposedly play Nintendo Switch, 3DS, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Neo Geo, Sega, NES Classics, and PlayStation Vita games. The cons console came with 800 games built in, while the handheld had 3,000 titles. Um, all this race. All this raised pesky questions about licensing, which many on Twitter speculated that the great battle of 2019 would be Nintendo vs. Soldier Boy. Still, Soldier Boy was Admanent, A-D-A-M-A-N-T, um, apologize if I can't say the name correctly, um, throughout, the, throughout the month on Twitter that everything was fine and his haters could keep on hating. The, the musician was treating as recently as December 28th that licensing wasn't an issue, that his consoles weren't going anywhere, and that Nintendo definitely wasn't going to sue him, though the tweet itself used slurs and was substantially deleted, of course, in the age of the internet. Um, even if you delete it, someone could screenshot, screenshot it and save it for future references. Something had to clearly change since then, and his entire gaming line has vanished from the Soldier Watch store. Um, and basically the tweet that he put out on December 29, 2018 said, I had to boss up. I didn't have a choice. Um, I have a feeling that most likely someone basically suggested to him that it's better to back out of this now. That this was going to be a no-win situation. That if he went through this and continued to use um, licensed games or games that he wasn't authorized to put on these consoles and all that stuff or licensed games that he didn't get permission for to be exact i mean excuse me one second i mean again if he wanted to truly compete against sony and microsoft and nintendo there's nothing wrong with that i mean recently we learned that slightly mad studio is releasing their own console and all that stuff and if he wants to do it you know through the league away get investors and all that then that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Competition is important in a free market, though. It's going to be tough against Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, but there's nothing wrong with that. But the whole situation with him playing, ranging from playing the race card to taking a Chinese emulator or Chinese knockoff console and passing it off as his and giving Nintendo's um, policy of their IPs being used without their permission Sometimes they're in the right, sometimes they're in the wrong, but in this situation, obviously they were in the right to be exact. Um, this was obviously a no-win situation for him. Now, whether or not Nintendo continues to pursue the lawsuit against Soldier Boy or not remains to be seen. It's possible they could drop the lawsuit altogether since Soldier Boy is no longer selling these consoles, but we'll have to wait and see. But overall... I think this was the right thing for him to do, or at least somebody suggested to him that it probably this was not the smart thing. It was not a smart business decision to make from the beginning. So overall, hopefully he'll learn he learned his lesson from this, but I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't. I'm not saying I could be wrong and he did, but I wouldn't exactly be shocked by this in any way. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to part three. And this one, we're going to be taking a look at a rumor that the NPD um, might have been leaked for December, and it might be good news for Nintendo, assuming this report is 100% correct. So take a quick break, and we will be right back.
Okay, and we are back with part three of our My Choose Zent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at a, a rumor going around that it looks like that the NPD may have been leaked. Now, obviously, we're not going to hear about the NPD and how well some of the games did over this over the holidays during the month of December until probably maybe a little bit later in the month of January and so forth. But supposedly there are some leaks coming out for it. And if this is true, it's very interesting and it might be good news for Nintendo, assuming this is all correct. Um, according to several articles, this one's from Nintendo Soup. Again, links are in the description. It's reported that according to a according to a leak report um the nintendo switch was the best selling video game console in the u.s for the month of december not only that the not only that the report seemed to suggest that the switch had outsold both the ps4 and xbox one combined in that month it would be a huge deal if this is true industry insider benji b-e-n-j-i um apologize so i'm not saying the name correctly who has access to eternal sales data has also thrown around some figures for the month of December. Um, he has estimated that the Switch has sold over 2 million units in December, while the Xbox One moved around 1 million and the PS4, um, PS4 slightly under 1 million. Now, obviously, we won't know until the official report comes out, until maybe. Um, when, when the NPD comes out though, and it'll be very interesting to see when Nintendo releases their financial earnings to see where the Switch currently stands on the sales figures. We know that they are trying to aim for 20 million units sold by, supposedly by March of 2019, if I'm saying this correctly. But, and last time I checked, I believe, I think they were at 18 million. I could be wrong on that one, on, on that, but it sounded like they were, but if this is true, and if it is, then it is possible they may have reached their 20 million units sold. It's also possible, and I've heard this, that they may have sold up to like maybe 25 million units to possibly 35 million units. So we don't know until we hear the official confirmation. But if this is true, and they reach their goal, that's good. I mean, this is definitely better than compare to the situation we saw with the Wii U a couple years ago when they were trying to aim for 9 million units sold and they ended up, I think that was for, um, yeah, for their fiscal, for their fiscal earning, but only managed to sell up to 2.5 million Wii U's. That, that was an embarrassment. And I think that's where they had to realize they had to take a different strategy and an approach and all that. So, but, I'm hoping this is true. I'm hoping they sold, were able to reach that 20 million un units, so we won't know until we get official confirmation, but I'm leaning towards it is, and that's where I'm leaning towards right now. And hopefully, if the, and uh, this is good. I, I'm very pleased with it. I'm, I do wonder if some of that could be the fact that Smash Brothers may have pushed, the game, pushed people to get a Nintendo Switch. I mean, excuse me. It's not out of the realm of possibility. There are people that will buy a game for, will buy a system for one game. And we've seen this happen before. I mean, I remember hearing how people purchase a Wii U just to play Super Smash Brothers Wii U, just to play that game alone. So it's not out of the realm of possibility, as crazy as that may sound. So we'll have, so overall, we'll have to wait until we get official confirmation to confirm this we'll have to wait until npt releases their sales dat data and so forth and of course until nintendo releases their fiscal earnings but if this is true i say this is good it's obviously clear the switch is doing very well for nintendo and hopefully that momentum continues on going forward how well it will do when sony releases eventually releases a playstation 5 or xbox microsoft releases their next system remains to be seen at this time we'll have to wait and see what happens when those systems come out but for now um again assuming this information is correct i would say good for nintendo um hopefully this is an indication they reached their 20 million units sold and hopefully here's more hoping to see the switch continue to perform and do very well <clears throat> 
Okay, uh, we're gonna take a quick break. When we get back, we'll get to part four, and this one has to do with the announcement of Persona 5R, which is both good news for one group of gamers who have a certain console and possibly bad news for one group of gamers who have a certain console. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part four of our My True Scent video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be looking at the announcement of Persona 5 R. Now, ever since um, Joker from Persona 5 was announced as a upcoming DLC fighter for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, though, there were many speculations and rumors going around that Atlas was planning to bring over a version of Persona 5, often known as Persona 5R, to the Nintendo Switch. Well, recently a reveal trailer for, or, a little, or should I say a teaser trailer for Persona 5R was announced, but it may not be the announcement everybody wanted though. Um, according to, um, let's see if I can look it up. According to Vanity, Variety, V-A-R-I-E-T-Y, um, it says Atlas has reportedly working on a new version of its 2016 PS4 exclusive role-playing game Persona 5 called Persona 5R, it revealed on Sunday. Um, the publisher released a short teaser video and a, and a comp accompanying website, but didn't give any details. It will talk about it while what it's working on in March. The teaser does contain the phrase new project, uh, however, so it's possible that Atlas will have more to talk about than just one title. Many Persona fans are hoping for a Nintendo Switch port, especially after the announcement that Persona 5's main character Joker is coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate in a DLC pack. Um, Atlas gave no indication a port is happening though, and only the PlayStation logo briefly appeared before the teaser. Although Atlas hasn't confirmed whether or not Persona 5R is a remake, it's, it's made enhanced versions of Persona titles in the past. Persona 3 FES is a director's cut of the 2006 PlayStation 2 Persona 3, for example. It contained numbers of changes and improvements, including a new playable Eulogy, E-P-I-L-O-G-U-E. -E. Again, I apologize if I'm not saying the name correctly. Um, in 2009, Atlas also released a PlayStation Portable version of Persona 3 Portable. That remade, that remake added a new female protagonist, story elements, and music. The next entry in the series, the 2008 PlayStation 2 game, Persona 4, also got a enhanced port on the PlayStation Vita called Persona 4 4 um, Gold in, in 2012. Um, Atlas has also created numbers of Persona spin-offs over the years, such as the fighting game Persona 4 Arena and a series of rhythm games rhythm titles, a dungeon crawling RPG for the Nintendo 3DS called Persona Q2, New, Cin Cinematic, New Cinema Labyrinth, launched in Japan in November, but it's unclear if the new project referenced the teaser or for the spin-off or something else entirely. So it's certain so a lot of, some Nintendo fans are kind of a bit disappointed in this. They were hoping that the rumor turned out to be true that Persona uh, 5R or a port of Persona 5 was coming to the Nintendo Switch. Now, it is possible we might hear something in March. It's possible they could be saving an announcement for um, Persona 5 or Persona 5R to come to the Nintendo Switch. But it's also possible that this could this could well be nothing more than a PlayStation PS4 exclusive, though. And it wouldn't be the first time we've seen exclusives, you know, on the, you know. Sony doing a PlayStation exclusive for their system. I mean, um, last year, the two Castlevania games, I think um, Sympathy of the Night and Reckon of Darkness, if I'm saying the name correctly though, um, basically made their way over to the PS4. There were rumors that it could come to other systems, but it was later found out that for with Konami that uh, Sony was willing to fund, this pro fund these projects to make it be exclusive for the PS4. And it's possible that could be the case for this one as well. So 
While I would be a little bit disappointed that Persona 5 R or Persona 5 is not coming to the Nintendo Switch, I wouldn't be completely shocked or surprised or lose sleep at, off of it. After all, we've had a lot of guest third-party characters make an appearance on the Smash Brothers series, and not all of their games have made it over <clears throat> excuse me, to a Nintendo console. We've had Solid Snake from the Metal Gear Solid series make an appearance on Smash Brothers, but we never got a port of either Metal Gear Solid 4 or 5 um, onto either, you know, like the Wii U or anything like that. I mean, we've had um, Cloud from... Uh, from Final Fantasy 7, and yet we haven't gotten a port. Um, well, actually, we are going to get a port of Final Fantasy 7, but it doesn't look like it's the remake at this time. Um, the castle, of course, the Castlevania. We got Richard and Simon Belmont. At the same time, some characters have also had their games appear on a system. Obviously, Mega Man, for example, and we got Mega Man 11 with reports. Uh, as a side note, a report that. Obviously, Mega Man 12 is in the works or something like that. So, it wouldn't surprise me if we do get Joker from Persona 5, but the Persona series doesn't come to the Nintendo Switch. I know some people will probably be disappointed if that turns out to be the case, but we'll have to wait and see in March. Maybe we'll see Persona 5R come to the Switch. Maybe we'll see if... Assuming there's no exclusive or anything like that, maybe we'll get like the spinoff or something like that. So for now, it seems as though Persona 5 R, whether is right now bound for the PS4, whether it sees the light of day of the Switch or whether this is nothing, whether this is a or if this is a director's cut of 2016's Persona 5, um, that remains to be seen. But hopefully in March, we'll find out um, soon enough. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to part five. And this one has to do with a comment made by Platinum Games. So we'll take a little break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part five of our My True Scent video for this week. And for this one, we are going to take a look at a comment that Platinum Games have made. Now, I've been a fan of Platinum for quite some time, and I've enjoyed a lot of the games they have put out, though. While they have earned criticism of some of their games that have not sat very well or have not gotten great reviews, such as, you know, I think there was the Legend of Korra game to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant in Manhattan. They've also been, they've also gotten praise from a lot of their games, ranging from, of course, obviously the Bayonetta series to last year's Mir Automata that was, got high praise for a lot of people and actually sold very well to be exact. And of course, there are some of the personal favorite games that they have put out, such as the Bayonetta series is a good example with Bayonetta 1 and 2 and we have the upcoming Bayonetta 3 for the Nintendo Switch to a personal favorite of mine on the Wii, um, Mad World, which was a fun, you know, Sin City like game that was just beautiful. I love the art style and all that stuff. Well, Platinum may have some more surprises in their hands for 2019 and it has to do with some of the comments they made. Um, in, a, in several, in an article from VGR, it says, quote, 2019 is coming to a, 2019 is coming to a close, or actually 2018, that sounds like a typo, and a lot of game studios are giving their holiday message to their fans, from promise of epic proportions and a bright future for established games to a lot of promising games releases. The game industry is preparing for interesting 2019. One of the companies that joined the celebration is no, none other than Platinum Games. Um, from one of the developers, one of the folks at Platinum Games recently talked to 4Gamer, translated VI by G-E-M-A-T-S-U, about the future of the company. He mentioned that 2019 will be a very intense year for the game company. Not only that, but they will, but they also have plenty of games announcements that will defy, that will definitely please their fans. Next year will be an interesting year as usual as it seems like as usual. It seems like it will be the year where Platinum Games aims to step up to step up a few steps so I will do the best that I can. 
if I end with something safe like that, then my statement won't be that interesting, right? So next year we'll make various, what they mean by next year is this year though, we'll make various announcements. I'm another developer um, who worked on the games like Nier Automotive it basically said, quote, I'm hoping to share more details about Babylon's Fall, um, a game that they're working on, which we're developing in cooperation with Platinum Games within a year, said the producer. We also have several other unannounced titles, so I would continue to do my best um, while making do my best while making all sorts of sacrifice. Now it's unclear what Platinum has announced or anything like that. We do know the fact that they're working on that. They're also on Babylon's Fall. I believe that's for, if I'm mistaken, that's going to arrive next year for the PS4 and PC. And they're working on supposedly a smartphone project um, called World of Demons. And let's not forget, they're also working on the Switch exclusive Bayonetta 3, which according to several statements saying it seems to be going along very well. Um, hopefully we'll hear more about it this year and I'm hoping that this year they release it. But what could they be working on? Well, what else could they be working on? Well, it's possible we could see some new collaborations or maybe some revival of some, maybe some new franchise that revival or at least revival of some franchises that haven't got another, haven't seen the light of day or haven't got another chance. Maybe the fact, maybe we'll see another Vanquish, maybe a remake of the first one or a Vanquish 2 to be exact. Maybe we'll see, maybe they'll remake, say, the DS um, game Infinite Space. I would love to see a remake with that, which to me, and sort of cut down a bit of the learning curve on that one. Um, I would love for them to see do a remake or a sequel to Mad World. That would be awesome, to be exact. Um, I would be open, if this is possible, to bring see Nier Automotive come to the Nintendo Switch. That would be great. Or coming up with a brand new IP. So it's, it's very good that Platinum Games has more games in development and probably... At, probably we're going to hopefully see some of those released in 2019 or at least hear more announcements of it in 2019 and i'm hoping it doesn't suffer the same faith like we saw with scalebound what what that whole situation went through hopefully we don't run into that kind of situation though but overall it's very encouraging um hopefully we'll hear more announcements that they have to make maybe updates of some games that are coming out and i'm hoping that some of them do come to Nintendo Switch. That would be great. Oh, and let's not forget there's also the rumors about the possibility that Wonderful 101 could be coming to the Nintendo Switch. I would, if true, I would love to see that happen and maybe a sequel to that as well. So overall, it's nice to hear that Platinum Games is seems to be doing well right now. Here's to hoping that some of the announcements they make in 2019 are positive and good. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to our final video, part six. And this one has to do with the discovery of the possibility that the Frostbite engine could work on a Nintendo Switch. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our... If I'm doing this correctly, sixth and final part of our My True Scent video. And for this final part, we're going to be talking about a rumor of the possibility that the Frostbite engine could be working, could work on the Nintendo Switch. Now, when it comes to the relationship between Nintendo and EA, which owns the Frostbite engine, it's been, shall we say, spotty at best. Their support has not been, shall we say, the greatest support of all. While some may point to Nintendo's relationship to third parties in the past though, and it's justifiable, they don't exactly have the best relationship, EA's attitude towards Nintendo, however, has rubbed people off the wrong way. From releasing Mass Effect 3 Take Back the Earth Edition when they just released Mass Effect Trilogy on the PS3 and 360, to basically releasing FIFA on basically the Wii and the DS and basically only offering basically their idea of just 
offering just a roster update to be exact. And recently we have seen basically EA's only support for the Nintendo Switch so far has been releasing FIFA and the claim of it being under built under a custom made engine as they are as the claim is that supposedly Frostbite engine would not work on the Nintendo Switch, not to mention the developers of Titanfall have laughed at the idea of Titanfall coming to the Nintendo Switch and all. Well, recently, a video by a YouTuber by the name of Drake81, or The Doct, again, or Doc, Doctor 81 again, apologize if I'm not saying his name correctly, though, has recently popped up um, basically over some information that he found. And this was basically found off of a LinkedIn page. Although several articles have reported on this, supposedly the LinkedIn page that has shown was a former, supposedly a software engineer person who had who had experience working at EA from July 18th to present for six months. And some of the comments have mentioned about, has pointed out saying, responsibility for contain, for creating and ma maintaining SKI for, X, for Xbox, PlayStation, and P PC, which allow game teams to in integ integrate their games within EA's environment. Engineer already existed S -S SDK for Nintendo Switch, allowing game teams to enable publishing games on Switch. So that's basically what he is focusing on. Um, I have a link into all the link in the description for his video, and you can check it out yourself and see for yourself. Or you can, if I'm doing right, right here, click on the card and take and click on it yourself. Now, I, before I give my thoughts about it, I do want to say I have nothing personal against this YouTuber. I have nothing personal against. Drake81, if I'm saying his name correctly, apologize if I'm not. I don't have any grudge or do anything like that, or, or anything like that at all. Um, at, having said that, my thoughts about the Frostbite engine on the, on the Nintendo Switch is this. Even if what he is saying is true, let's say for argument's sake it's true. Let's just say they the Frostbite engine can work on the Switch. Even if that's true, I'm not 100% convinced that EA is going to put their games on the Nintendo Switch outside of FIFA though. Um, given their history, given a lot of the comments they have said in uh, the past though, especially towards Nintendo in general, despite their claim of quote, having a great partnership with them. And let's not forget the Frostbite engine isn't exactly an engine that has earned a great reputation. Most people will point to Mass Effect Andromeda as an example. Not to mention EA's reputation as a whole has had a history of finding ways to piss off gamers. Some of it just uh, some of it is justifiable why gamers are angry at EA. Some others aren't always the case. But let's not forget this is the same company that released SimCity on PC at a poor state. And then basically threw Maxis developers under the bus and closed them down. This is the same studio that released Dungeon Keeper Mobile on ISO devices and Android as well. With horrendous microtransaction in it that got several backlashes. Multiple backlashes to be exact. That unfortunately closed the studio Mythic Entertainment that, closed, that worked on that game. This is the same studio that butchered Dead Space. The Dead Space franchise with Dead Space 3 that put... A whole bunch of unnecessary microtransaction, had visceral game work on Battlefield Hardline, and was working on a single player Star Wars game until they basically um, can't close that studio down and turn that Star Wars game into something different. Um, obviously, this is the same studio that did Mass Effect Andromeda. I already talked about that one a bit. Let's not forget this is the same studio that released Star Wars Battlefront 2 with loot boxes and galore until Disney had to step in and tell them to take them out to the point where government officials around the world at least or at least some government officials investigating the use of loot boxes as a form of gambling and EA acting defiant and of course let's not forget this is the same studio that showed off Command and Conquer Arrival for ISO devices much to dismay for longtime fans and of course released Battlefield 5 to the fact that that game didn't exactly perform very well, especially putting aside the SJW and Feminazi that I don't 100% agree, don't. Putting that aside though, 
what did all EA didn't exactly help themselves when they pulled the if you don't like it don't buy it which got pre-orders down for that system and all that's which pre-orders were strongly down they delayed it till November and unfortunately that didn't help the situation either for them so uh, the point I'm making is that even if this is true, I doubt EA is going to support the Switch and put a lot of their games on it. Especially since they've been pushing heavily on the microtransaction and the whole games as a service and all that stuff. I could be wrong. EA could possibly bring some of their games over to the Nintendo Switch. And I'm not saying I'm, a, I'm, not saying I'm going to boycott or stop them from bringing their game to the Nintendo Switch. I just don't know if people are going to open their wallets to it, especially the reputation they have earned to be exact. So I'm not 100% sold on this entirely. Again, I, like I said, I could be completely wrong, but my overall opinion on this is that even if this is true, I'm not holding my breath that EA is going to bring games that run on Frostbite Engine over to the Nintendo Switch. But We'll have to wait and see what what happens then. <clears throat> okay, um, this concludes this my two cent video for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about the rumor of that the Witcher Three could be coming to the Nintendo Switch? Do you think this rumor is true? Do you think this rumor is thought? false do you think it's technically possible that the witcher 3 could run onto the nintendo switch and if so what kind of optimization and compression would have to go in to make the game run on the nintendo switch even if they managed to somehow get it at running at 720p at 30 frames per second what are your thoughts about soldier boy bowing out and not selling these consoles and handhelds do you think this is the right thing for him to do? Do you think Nintendo will continue to possibly pursue a lawsuit against him? Or do you think they'll more than likely, or do you think they'll drop the lawsuit? What are your thoughts about the NP, the possibility that the NPD data could be leaked though? Do you think this, do you think this leak is accurate? Do you think Nintendo had reached selling 20 million Nintendo Switch before their fiscal report before like March 2019? Do you think they reached that goal? Do you think they not reach, didn't reach that goal? Do you think Smash Brothers may have helped in a way? Um, what are your thoughts about the teaser for Persona 5R? Do you, are you looking forward to this game? Do you still believe it's going to come to the Nintendo Switch or do you think it's more than likely probably just going to stay on the place on the PS4? Um, what are your thoughts about um, Platinum Game and their announcement that they'll have something excited for 2019? Are you looking forward to whatever they're going to announce? Do you think they'll announce some new IPs? Do you think they'll resurrect some, maybe some old IPs to be exact? Um, are you looking forward to any of their games that I think like Battle on Fall or Bayonetta 3 or the World of Demons for IS or for mobile devices? And what are your thoughts about this rumor about the Frostbite engine working onto the Nintendo Switch? Do you think this rumor is accurate? Do you think that this could be a sign that EA could bring other games over to the Nintendo Switch? Or do you believe, given EA's reputation and some of the comments they've made it about Nintendo in the past, do you think that it's unlikely that they'll bring those games over to the Nintendo Switch? Do you agree with what I say in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, um, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And I hope you hit that like button. I would appreciate it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos that I do. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And Feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through PayPal me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day. And of course, Happy New Year. Bye.